Hey there guys, and welcome to the start of another all new series here on the channel. This one is a bit different from anything I have done before. I'm going to be pulling up all the big battles in every Pokemon game and go type by type to determine the top 10 strongest trainers of a single typing in the franchise. I'll take a look at a trainer, we'll use Misty as an example, since today we're talking about the water typing. And I'm going to review every team she uses in Pokemon games and present the strongest as an entry on this list. My parameters are that a trainer must at least have half their team with a particular typing. So for example, while Agatha is seen as a ghost type elite four member, her whole team is poison typing. So I'll be more inclined to discuss her as a poison type trainer instead. That's it for how this will work though. Let's just go get this top 10 started. And please let me know which typing you'd like to see next. We're going to start this list off with the post-game battle you have with Lana in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. She is not exactly what I would call a super difficult battle by any means. Her team is a level 60 Lantern, a level 60 Cloyster, and a level 60 Araquanid. This is not a scary team. I'll be the first to admit that. Lantern is easily handled by an earthquake, and I'm not too sure if anyone has ever been afraid of an Araquanid before. A Hydro Vortex definitely could hit your team hard, I will admit that, but it's not much of a worry. Finally, you have her Cloister, which also doesn't really worry me too much. Essentially, I ran a bit low on Water Trainers and had to include her here in the number 10 spot, but she is very much the weakest of these strong trainers. The only threat her team has is that Araquanid running the Waterium Z. Let's, uh, let's just move on and get to the better teams of the list. Alright, this next trainer is gonna cause some controversy, but I point you back to the rules I explained in the intro. If a trainer has at least half their team sharing a typing, then I'm considering them a trainer of that typing. That means they could be a dual type trainer, and in the case of number 9 the day, that's the deal. Lorelei is of course an ice type member of the Elite Four but her rematch team in Let's Go features four water type Pokemon while she also has her five ice types. There's a ton of crossover, but at the end of the day, Lorelei's team is mixed. Her strongest Pokemon is her Slowbro in my opinion. She has Lapras, Jinx, Alolan Sandslash, Dugong, and Cloyster too. However, Slowbro packs the biggest threat, even if it is slow. Surf and Psychic are going to slam your team hard, even if you aim to take most of her team down with the partner Pikachu. It still isn't as easy of a deal. Jinx could pop off a lovely kiss and effectively waste a turn or two for you, which can get annoying. Much like Lana, I wouldn't consider this battle super difficult, but worth noting that there is at least one thing here that could be annoying to take down, being that Slowbro. It's got good stats and coverage, but don't worry too much about ever needing to battle Lorelei. The next water type trainer we'll be touching upon is the famous chef from Kalos, Seable. Now, X and Y aren't exactly known for being challenging, but I will admit that Seabold does have a little bit of power on his squad. For one, Gyarados is always a threat in battle, and the one he runs out has D-Dance, alongside Waterfall, Ice Fang, and Earthquake. That's honestly one of the best you could run out, and if you allow that thing to set up, you're gonna be in big trouble. It's flanked by Starmie, Clawitzer, and Barbarical. And while I'm not exactly afraid of the last one, there is reason to fear the other two. Starmie is a great special attacker, and it packs Surf and Psychic alongside Dazzling Gleam, with Light Screen for good measure to prevent your special moves from hitting as hard as they can. Finally, there's the Clawitzer packing the Mega Launcher ability alongside an entire moveset that takes advantage of it. It's arguably the scariest on the team potentially. But regardless, Seabold is challenging if you don't bring in an electric type. And with Light Screen in the way, it might need to be a physically attacking one. 
This is most certainly a massive step up from 9 to 8 today. We've got another gym leader coming up next, one of the more recent water trainers, Nessa. I'm talking about her championship tournament team here, which is actually a little difficult to overcome if not prepared. Her Pelipper is actually pretty scary with Drizzle pairing alongside Hurricane, and of course Tailwind, which can make her whole team a bit faster. If allowed to get a bit out of her Pelipper, the rest of the team becomes annoying. Galissapod is really strong, and alongside the potential speed boost from Tailwind, it gets scary. Quagsire is always annoying since you need a grass type move to hit for super effective damage, and Toxapex takes hits with ease under many circumstances. I'd be super remiss if I didn't bring up the Gigantamax Dreadnought as well, with the powerful Jaw Lock working alongside Stab in Liquidation in Rock Tomb. There's a reason to worry about having to battle Nessa on the road to becoming champion in Galar. And it's because her team is perfectly willing to set up a single move and punish you big time. So closing out the first half of the list, we've got Sinnoh's Crash Your Wake and his BDSP rematch team making an appearance. As we know, a lot of rematch teams in BDSP and Cynthia herself are all packing some serious firepower. They've got great stats, powerful movesets, and of course items. Crash Your Wake runs a Politoed with Drizzle and a Damp Rock, and then a Kindra with Swift Swim right next to it. Come on guys, that's... that's pretty intense. The majority of his team runs out the Swift Swim ability, with the only one not doing so being Gyarados, which has Dragon Dance. This team is nearly a full-on competitive one, or at least as competitive as an NPC team can be. Resto Chesto Swift Swim Kindra, Shell Smash Huntail, and even an annoying sub-teeter dance Ludicolo. If you pick a fight with Crash or Wake, you better have a nice electric type move ready to go. As a matter of fact, may I suggest using Clefable? A fairy move for Kindra, Thunderbolt for some of these water types. You can actually cover quite a bit using that thing. I will say though, if Crash Your Wake is just outside the top 5, then we must be about to touch on some very difficult teams. As we get kicked off with the top 5, there's something that you'll notice from here on out. All 5 of these teams are from the PWT in Black and White 2. I think that'll happen often on these lists for sure. We're gonna start off with the Emerald Gym Leader, Juan, as his Black and White 2 team is for sure pretty good. It's filled with items as all of these World Tournament teams are, and Juan's is a very solid one. Kindra, Walrein, Crawdont, Whiskash, Relicanth and Politoed are the team. Kindra is set up in a way where it can run Rain Dance for its own Swift Swim, and Crawdont and Relicanth carry Rain Dance as well for continued support, with Relicanth possibly having Swift Swim as well. The only truly bad Pokemon on this team is Walrein, as it doesn't bring too terribly much to the party aside from bulk. You've of course got to be cautious of the one-hit KO moves, which despite the awful accuracy, still could just come through and ruin your battle. It doesn't matter what three Pokemon one sends in, it could still be a tough battle. But if you end up facing a combo of Kindra, Relicanth, and Politoed, you're gonna have a difficult time. It's the easiest of these PWT battles, but you're still in for a challenge against the Debonair Water Master. Next up, we've got the Water Gym Leader in Unova, Cress. Well, he's one of them, and you'll see the other in a little bit. But for now, we've got this butler. Cress has his signature Simipore, followed by a Crawdont, much like one. Then Samurott, Azumarill, Slowking, and Seismitoad. This team can definitely be a problem. As we know, there can only be three Pokemon that appear in the battle, and I'd be especially worried of that Seismitoad. It's got a Rindo Berry to prevent grass moves from doing their most damage. 
and it can set up a rain dance and suddenly zoom around if it has swift swim. A zoomeral is a horrifying thing to think about dealing with too, because it's got the potential for huge power plus choice band. If Slowking comes through and puts up a nasty plot, you're in trouble. Because with the Expert Belt and its decently varied move pull, you're in for some trouble. Those are three Pokemon I think really highlight the worst of what Crest has to offer. Though don't fool around if Semipore or Crawdont comes out. Shockingly enough, Samurott is probably the weakest thing this trainer has, but go figure on that one. That's it though for Cress. Let's move on to the next one, his successor. That's right, we've got Marlin checking in with his World Tournament team here. I hope you guys enjoyed the cool thumbnail I had done for this one featuring Marlin. As while his Wailord is by no means the best Pokemon he trots out, it's still got some legs to stand on. Well, it doesn't because it's a whale, but you guys get what I mean. So Marlin has Jellicent, which is probably the best Pokemon on his squad, with Caracosta and Cloyster both running Shell Smash. And of course, a couple of generally strong Pokemon in Starmie and Quagsire. I think the team you really don't want to run into with Marlin is Jellicent, Cloyster, and Wailord. Jellicent is just really strong, and with the Expert Belt, it can hit doubly hard with its decent set of coverage. Plus, it takes them hits pretty decent, and the Water Ghost typing is a real nice one. Then, with Cloyster, if it has Skill Link, a single Shell Smash and running out Icicle Spear and Rock Blast can result in an absolute annoyance that your team would specifically need to be trying to counter. Then, with Whale Lord, the Choice Scarf is going to help it outspeed some Pokemon and start pushing out Water Spouts, which will hit stupidly hard thanks to Whale Lord's Whale of an HP stat. Marlin is prepared to use his best water types to make you miserable. Believe that. I know most of you have been waiting for this one, probably preparing the type in the comments about how you were wanting Misty as the video has gone on. Well, here she is in her PWT glory. Her team features what you would expect to find. A Blastoise flanked by a Sturmy and Lapras though she also features Pokemon from later generations in Jellicent, Quagsire, and Lantern. The three best Pokemon she can pull out are probably her Jellicent, Starmie, and Lantern. I know it seems really wild not to say her Blastoise is great, but it leaves a lot to be desired for me. And the three Pokemon I just named are too good. Lantern with Volt Absorb means you need to be careful with using electric moves, and really the possibility of Quagsire popping up kind of means the same thing. You need to make sure you have a good grass type move for this battle. Though, if you think about bringing in a grass type, well, you're going to be at the mercy of Starmie's Ice Beam. And do you think you can get away with using a physical attacker against a specially defensive Jellicent? Well, better hope you don't get dealt a fat Will-O-Wisp that will cripple your attack stat. There's definitely other combos of Misty's Pokemon that can end up really messing you up. But the three I just brought up are, in my opinion, the toughest trio to have to handle. It's time we wrap this one up with the strongest water type trainer in the franchise. I think it's now important for me to remind you that this is in my opinion, as there is such a large amount of options for teams that maybe you're not seeing things the way I am. And if so, I understand. I believe that the PWT team of Wallace is the biggest challenge any water type trainer will ever give you. His team can be built in a few different ways that it ends up being very annoying, with the worst being Starmie, Swampert, and Milotic. Milotic is just awful to try and deal with. It's a specially defensive wall, and in this battle, it will have the Rocky Helmet on. So trying to chip away physically can get very annoying. There's not as many physical grass and electric type moves either, so there's a good chance your team of choice might not be prepared to deal with Milotic easily. Swampert serves as a strong special attacker that can punish you and only be hurt for big damage by grass moves. As for the Starmie, you guys know how its speed and special attacking prowess can be scary. 
and with a moveset that boasts grass coverage in Signal Beam and poison coverage in Psychic, well, it's tough. You're going to have a rough time, and I think it's important to also point out the ultimate handicap. You don't always know what trainer you're going to run into in some of these events. You may not be battling a water trainer at all, and that can make team building even more rough. That's it though, the one-time Hoenn region champion Wallace rounds out the list. That's going to do it for yet another top 10 here on the channel, and the first entry in what I hope is a fun series. Let me know what you guys think about it, what your top 10 water trainers of all time are, and what typing you'd like to see me do next. I'll be on the lookout. Welcome back to the outro folks, your favorite part of the video. Thank you for enjoying another Mystic Umbreon video. We made it through the end of the 8th generation, and now we begin the long trek into late 2022 where Pokemon Scarlet and Violet await us. It's a whole new world we'll live in, but we still gotta catch them all. However, there's still a ton of videos to do and experiences to have until then. If you're interested in more Mystic content, check out my TikTok and the Mystic Umbreon Shorts YouTube channel. If we get the 10k followers on TikTok, I'll be doing a viewer's choice video. If you like Genshin Impact, check out my Genshin channel Tevachinary. So if you all enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. See you next time.